Hello everyone, back to today's second video, doing Jam A Friday for today's second video. So, as always, on a Friday, we're having your month head look at it, which is going to take us into the second half of July. Uh, of course, I'm going to start off having a look at the JMA, and then we'll have a look at the CFSB2 and compare the two, and uh, we'll see what they're showing, what trends we can pick out uh, for the next four weeks. I'll get on with that for you very shortly, just to say that coming up later on today, we're going to have the regular Tater 14 day video update with all of the usual features. We've got our ENSO update for June 2020 coming up tonight. Quite an interesting watch that, I think. Uh, the European Outlook has just been released, so uh, yes, have a look at the next week, 10 days in detail uh, for Europe and uh, that is on the YouTube channel. We don't embed that with gazwebbies.com at the moment. So if you want to see that, you have to go to Gaz uh YouTube uh, channel and subscribe there as well, please. Okay, let's go on with JMA Friday. So we're going to start off with the 500 millibar height on the flow charts uh, from the North Pole and Arctic view down. So this is the North Pole just here. This is the wider Arctic circle around there. And of course, we've got the mid latitudes uh, of the Northern Hemisphere around here. So blue is extrapolating to below average heights, which is low pressure. Yellow, orange and red extrapolate to above average heights, which is high pressure. Means to break down to weekly periods, the first weekly period is going to take us from the 26th of uh, June today through to the 3rd of July. The coming week looks unsettled with below average heights to the northwest of the country. Low pressure is to uh, the northwest of the UK and Ireland. And we're bringing in uh, the jet stream off the Atlantic as well, above average heights, high pressure to our south. So we're ending June and beginning July on quite an unsettled westerly Atlantic driven note, which will bring showers along with spells of rain and a drop in temperature compared to the heat of recent days. Week two takes us from the 3rd through to the 10th of July, still looking quite unsettled here with below average heights to the west and to the northwest of the country. Again, bringing in that west to southwesterly flow, so it looks unsettled. Further showers, if not longer spells of rain, would be uh, likely here. And uh, pretty cool as well with the winds coming in from off the Atlantic. Uh, change though suggested for weeks 3 and 4, this takes us from the 10th through to 24th of July, we lose that area of uh, but low pressure for below average heights and we replace it with an area of above average heights with high pressure. Uh, jet stream going to be doing something a little bit like that probably, so we're sending the jet stream to the north. So we're under an area of high pressure there as we're moving into the middle part of July. It suggests that weather could be turning much, much drier and a lot warmer as well as we move out into the middle part of the month. So yes, an unsettled start to July, definitely, uh, but high pressure coming back later on in the month. Uh, now, this is a tropical and mid latitude view, so British Isles in the top right hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it on this view. A reminder of the week 1 500 millibar heights, normally with the below average heights out to west, and again we're bringing in those westerly winds. So you'd expect this to be a quite a cool and set a week, indeed, that's what the model is showing. Uh, JMA shows uh, below average temperature anomalies overall. For the coming week uh, and above average rainfall so a cool and unsettled week on the way for week one week two also looking unsettled again with below average heights to the west and to the northwest bringing in the flow from off the atlantic so again atlantic driven quite unsettled conditions temperature anomalies are really no better than average probably hinting being a little bit below average there from the 3rd to 10th of July. And it's a wet of an average week too. So we have got a couple of cool and unsettled weeks coming up, most definitely. But then week 3 and 4, taking us from the 10th through to the 24th of July, uh, shows a change. Above average heights then setting up over the top of the country. Jet stream should be shifting uh, away to the north. Temperature anomaly, still nothing to write home about, uh, actually. I would expect it's probably getting a bit warmer by this point. Over here, it is warmer than average, just to our east. Bear in mind, of course, it's a two-weekly anomaly as well, so it could be transitional. It may take a little while to get into that high pressure, but when we do get into it, you would expect it to be going warmer, really. Uh, and the uh, precipitation anomaly, well, because we're under high pressure, we're shifting drier. So I think we're hinting at high pressure taking over there for the middle part of July, turning us drier and warmer too. 
Uh, let's see how the CFSV2 compares. So again, these are 500 bit of our heights breaking down into weak fears. The first week fear dates from 26th of June to the uh, 2nd of July. The coming week, uh, unsettled. Low pressure is in control of the weather in the week ahead. Jet stream shifting southwards as well. So, yes, going to be cool and unsettled and quite wet week coming up. Week 2, uh, 500 bit of our height only from the 3rd to the 9th of July. Has low pressure away to the northwest. Again, we're bringing in the wings off the Atlantic. And it's another pretty cool and unsettled week up to like the end of the first week of July anyway. Uh, then go through to week three and look at this. It's all changed very much in line with what the CFS was, or what Jamea, I should say, was just shown. It's attempt to the 16th of July. Above average heights, then building back strongly into the UK and over to many northern parts of Europe. Low pressure out to the northwest. Jet streams pushing northwards. That's turning us much drier and also a lot hotter, I would have thought, as we move into the middle part of July. And then week four is the 17th to the 23rd of July, again suggesting above average heights bridging through the country and going up to northern parts of Europe. Jet stream pushing northwards, that should also be a relatively warm and you would have thought pretty dry week. Temperature anomalies for week one, CFS V2 from the 26th of June to the 2nd of July, coming out uh, cooler than average. Yes, it's going to be quite a cool week coming up. And that goes on into week two, it's the 3rd to the 9th of July. That one is also below average. Week three, temperature anomalies beginning to stage a bit of a recovery, going a little bit warmer than average in England and Wales. Many parts of Europe becoming uh, much warmer, even hotter, you would say. And then week four, which is the 17th, 23rd of July. Close to average. Again, many parts of Europe looking quite hot. Uh, I think these are probably a little bit on the lowly side, actually. I would expect the temperature to be warmer than this is showing for weeks three and for weeks four. Um, then precipitations, uh, finally, so uh, week one precipitation with CFS V2 from the 26th of June, 2nd of July, wetter than average for northern parts of the country, near normal elsewhere. Hints at being a little bit wetter than average for week two as well, this is the 3rd to the 9th of July, that one also hints at being a little bit uh, wet on the wetter than average side. Then we go drier than average for week three, 10th to the 16th of July, drier than average as high pressure builds in. And week 4, 17th to 23rd of July is also looking dry of an average. So, you know what? We've got very good agreement here. And it's quite remarkable because I haven't seen this very often over the past few weeks. But we have got very, very good agreement here between the JMA and the CFS for not just the next couple of weeks, but the next four weeks, actually. So, they're both in agreement that the next couple of weeks are going to be cool and unsettled and Atlantic-driven. Low pressure dominates, being shells along the spells of rain, uh, and temperatures are going to be a bit on the disappointing side as well. That's weeks one and weeks two. Weeks three, four, they both suggest high pressure becomes much more of an important player again as we go through weeks three and four, and so it becomes a lot drier as high pressure builds in, and although the temperature numbers are a little bit on the lowly side. I think that's probably only because the, the models are dealing with cool and average conditions at the start. But I think once that high pressure really hooks itself in, uh, once, once we really hook up to the high pressure, then I think we will go off and running into a much warmer spell of weather. So I think they're both suggesting dry and warm weather, maybe hot weather comes back, like from the second week of July onwards up to the middle and into the second half of the month. And yes, really good agreement between the two which is something we haven't had all that much of over the past few um, weeks, you have to say. But that's it. That's uh, how they're uh, looking today. Remember, it's just a snapshot of what these models are showing. They could look very different next week. Any forecast beyond five to seven days is fraught with danger. But potentially, after a cooler, more unsettled start to July, summer comes back, uh, but certainly by the time we get through to the middle of the month. Uh, right then, so I'm going to be back later on with your 10 to 14 day video update, including all of regular features. Got our ENSO uh, uh, update coming up tonight for June 2020. So keep checking back to all of the updates. Uh, but uh, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.